Welcome to the Potter Blog site, February 27, 2014. So we've caught the Department of Energy playing fast and loose with the truth again. Uh, unfortunately, this time it involves the lives of uh, 13 people at their plant who, I believe, had, have had metabolic positive tests for uh, radioactive internal contamination. Uh, here's the thing you need to know. And that is this plutonium cloud that was released at the WIP plant, February 14th and it was plutonium cloud. There was the amount of plutonium in that cloud by mass was 490 percent greater than the amount of americium-241 that was in that cloud. DOE doesn't want to use the word plutonium. They don't want to let people know that it was plutonium released. They're trying their best to hide the truth and, and basically say that it was americium. They want to do this because they think americium is more reassuring than uh, plutonium. And the reason for this is as follows. First of all, americium is named, named after America, so nothing bad about that. The other thing is, is they can follow along with what they've been saying before about where they've been comparing this to have eating bananas or getting a dental x-ray or taking an aircraft trip. Well now, americium is found inside your smoke detector in your house safely contained away in a little container inside your smoke detector. But they want to be able to tell you that, oh, it's just americium, you already have that in your house, don't worry. Well, here's the release from uh, WIP about these 13 poor people, that there are 13 employees who tested positive now for radiological damage. And here is the falsehood. The release material was predominantly americium-241. That's a falsehood, at least based on what they store there, but more importantly, based on uh, information released by, released by CERMIC. Uh, they're an engineering group, although we think not a very good one, that DOE funds to uh, take uh, measurements at the facility. And so they took some air measurements during this uh, release. So these are DOE's people because DOE pays them even though they claim to be quote unquote independent. independent. It's more undependent. And so here's the, here's the reassuring claim. This is a radionuclide used in consumer smoke detectors and a contaminant in nuclear weapons manufacturing. Well that part is true. It's a contaminant, not the majority. This plant stores weapons grade plutonium. A little bit of americium develops in this plutonium because there's some plutonium-241 in that plutonium and that relatively quickly changes over to americium-241. So finding americium-241 in weapons grade plutonium is like finding a little bit of mold on a giant loaf of bread. It really stands out when you see it but the majority of the substance you have there is still bread. Now here's the uh, results from uh, CERMIC. And they released this the other day and here are their latest numbers and these are on site these are from an on site detection uh, near the vent stack now these, these are supposedly an engineering group this is the sloppiest engineering use of values I've ever seen uh, these values are supposed to be in meter, uh, meters cubed but they give them per sample time and over here, their previous detections, they say per sample, but previously they've reported these as being meter uh, becquerels per meter cubed. Now, why aren't they reporting it becquerels per meter cubed? Well, we think we have a very good idea. CERMIC has said that the release happened over a very short time period, and at some places it's quoting them 5, 10, 15, 30 seconds. But if you look at the sampling time, they ran this air filter from February 11th through February 18th, four days. The actual release itself happened right around midnight, February 14th, going into February 15th. So, and then the HEPA filter supposedly kicked on and supposedly kept all the, the stuff out. So they've got a seven day sample here where the vast majority of release, if you believe them, their own words, the vast majority of the release happened over around 30 seconds. So what they've done is they've peanut buttered, peanut buttered out this release uh, values here to be over seven days instead of being over the 30 seconds. So 
there's a lot of obfuscation going on here in both places and it, it, it's very troubling to us and should be troubling to anybody who calls themselves an engineer that they would do this but it's more troubling to the public because uh, they're showing themselves to be untrustworthy so we've done an analysis on this and what we did was is uh, we did the math here let me pull up the Excel chart itself we did the math here and uh, laid it all out to figure out how much plutonium was in the air and how much uh, americium was in the air now there's a thing known as sp specific activity and it's measures Becquerel's per gram and that's a function of the material itself basically what it means is, is it's a measure of how much radiation is given off by one gram of the material so we have it here for plutonium-239, plutonium-238, and americium-241. And what you see is americium-241 gives off a lot more radiation for the same amount of material. It's like a candle that burns brighter and quicker. And that's because americium has a shorter half-life. And if you look here at uh, Ceramex detection over a seven-day period, uh, they say that... Uh, Basically, they found 1.3 becquerels uh, per sample, 0.115 becquerels of plutonium-239 and 0.004 becquerels. Now, if you just take these numbers and you use uh, the sp specific activity and you do the math, what you come out to be is there is 4.9 times more plutonium by mass, by material, in that airborne release than there was americium. So the result is 490% more plutonium released than, than americium. Now what we did though is we wanted to quantify what the actual amount was in terms of material and uh, volume. So we corrected this for instead of this release happening, happening over 7 days, we corrected it down to 30 seconds, which means that the numbers were actually 20,160 times greater than they reported. So if you do that correction, then uh, based on a 30 second release, there were 2,318 becquerels per cubic meter of plutonium-239, 81 becquerels per cubic meter of plutonium-238, and 26,000 becquerels of uh, americium-241. You got to remember, americium burns brighter for a small amount, but when you change it over to grams of material, what you find out is, if you look here at these places, there's approximately five times more plutonium than there is uh, americium. And when you, uh, when we calculated out the uh, grams released based on the 10,000 cubic meter cloud, and we came up with that number by coming up with the max ventilation rate at WIP, which is uh, 20,000 cubic meters per second, assuming they're running all three fans sorry per minute assuming they're running all three fans 30 seconds means half of that so in that 30 second release they released 0.01 grams of uh, plutonium 239 and then 0.0000001 grams of plutonium 238 and 0.002 grams of americium 241 so you can see you've got uh, one hundredth of a gram of uh, plutonium-239 and two thousandths of a gram of americium-241 so roughly five times greater so then if you take that and you figure out how many becquerels were released how much radiation came off of all of that you add that up and the new numbers say that there were 28 286 million seventy thousand four hundred becquerels released in that 30 second period now the one thing to really consider is is this a release amount the total release of radioactive materials we estimate to be 0.012 grams. This site holds tons of radioactive material. Tons of radioactive material. The risk here is, is that whatever went wrong there at that plant goes wrong again but worse. Uh, likely a hydrogen uh, methane explosion. And so you gotta wonder, well and if you remember Fukushima, Fukushima there was an initial re the release and then several days later the plant blew up and released even a huge greater amount. Is this same potential possible at the website? 
yes, of course it is. And we've seen some activity indicating that the, uh, the government is planning or preparing for exactly for that to happen. And if we look here, as something we reported on the other day, uh, Kirtland Air Force Base in Albuquerque has ordered 1,200 particulate radiation suits. And here's the order on Fez, Fed Biz Ops. And that's the Oryx brand, abrasion resistant, 1,200 each. Yeah, let's see, where does it say the particular radiation thing? Minimum design, full protection to the wear when worn as an ensemble. Protect the wear against particulate radio radioactive contamination. So, an Air Force base in Albuquerque just decided uh, six, five to six days on February 20th that they needed to buy 1,200 radiation suits. Almost all this radioactivity shot north in a, in a very tight tunnel because of the wind up towards uh, Roswell, Albuquerque, all the way up potentially to Denver, and then it shot out across west. But uh, if there's another event there, you can expect a risk of uh, evacuation. So this looks like evacuation preparations. Now, the other thing to be consider, concerned about is another uh, order that came out from the CDC. The CDC is prepping mechanical ventilator manufacturers, that's people who, who, vent, who uh, make a device that uh, helps people breathe. They're prepping them for a massive order and they referenced radiological event and pandemic influenza. Now, the release itself that's already happened we think will induce what's called radiation pneumocystis in people along the initial uh, dispersion route which we think is up through towards Carlsbad, Roswell and up towards New, uh, uh, Albuquerque and even as far as north as, as Denver. So if you look for that, and here it is, they're requesting ventilators and they specify uh, radiation as being the uh, risk of this and they say emerging or other biological or radiological event that may quickly overwhelm hospital resources for the local, for the locale and region in a public health emergency resulting in respiratory failure for a large number of patients. Hospitals will need the surge medical capabilities to provide mechanical ventilation. So we have a link to this on our website. Uh, be very concerned about what's going on here. Be more concerned that uh, they appear to be hiding the truth as best they can. You have to question why they're doing that. One, the anti-nuclear activists will say, well, they're doing that just to protect themselves so people won't turn on nuclear energy. You know, I'm not so sure people will turn on nuclear energy anyways. But uh, the other reason to uh, stonewall and not release the truth is so they can prepare what's probably coming next. Or what they can prepare for what they think might be coming next, even if they don't think it will happen. Be prepared.